What is going on everyone? So it's time for my film reveal video. This is where I'm gonna take a look at my film from my trip to Zion for the very first time. Uh, I have all of the uh, developed film right here. So this is all Provia 100 transparency film. I got a camera overhead, got the light box here, and the film is in protective sleeves so I can handle it just fine. And uh, we're gonna go over it and I'm gonna share some of my thoughts on the compositions. We'll see how the exposures turned out and this is all about capturing the initial reaction to seeing the film uh, because I think it's really fascinating how that changes over time. So let's go ahead and get started. Uh, this is a scene I photographed along a icy creek in Zion. Um, my exposure is definitely a bit on the dark side, though I did expose quite a few sheets of film on this. Um, one, thing I was attract, one thing I was attracted to on this was all the very fascinating textures and form of the ice here. And also how the rock is a bit more reddish here than it was a little bit more kind of yellowish there where it was kind of transitioning in color and everything coming out from there. So I hope that my other sheets of film will have a little bit of a better exposure. I mean, this is workable, it's fine. Um, but I think it could be a little bit better. In terms of sharpness though, not only is it tack sharp, it's really fun to look at. And actually when looking at it through the loop, it doesn't look, the exposure doesn't look that bad. So it's not, it's not bad. Um, I just feel it could be a little bit better. Um, in terms of composition, obviously pretty straightforward, mostly centering this. I do try to place this a little bit above the midpoint. So it's not like it's perfectly centered. I try to have it just slightly above that. I think it helps to, to ground it a little bit more. Um, so not a bad way to start things out. We'll see which other ones I have from that scene. I feel like the exposure might be a little better on this one. Um, so if I remember right, I took some photos as the light was changing a little bit. Um, it was a little bit, uh, so this was in subdued light as the sun was rising. And at some point, the sun was hitting this directly. So I should have some of that a little bit later on as well. But this is certainly one of those diffused light variations. And again, this one's fine. And I do think it's perhaps a little bit brighter than the other one. And there is some water that's flowing underneath the ice. And from what I understand, is at least from what I've learned, is that these ice crystals are forming as the surface of the water is freezing as the water levels are lowering. And so it's creating these like three dimensional ice crystals, which this ends up like this meshwork of ice, but I really like the way that that turned out. It's a very cool subject. And again, this one's fairly similar. Um, I feel like the exposure on this one's a little closer to the first version. And I have no clue which of these I photographed first. And actually just looking at this on the light box, to me, this right now looks three-dimensional. It's really weird. And I doubt that will come through in the video. I doubt it'll come through in the scan, but that looks like that is full-on 3D, which is crazy. Okay, and then this is as the direct sunlight was hitting it. And this gets to be a bit too contrasty. Um, so of those first sheets of film, let's say this one right here is my best exposure. And I will have plenty to work with with that. It's actually a pretty good exposure. Um, I mean, I wouldn't mind it being a little bit brighter. I think what I'll need to do is I'll need to dodge this to pull a little more color out. 
If it was getting much brighter, I think I'd start losing some detail and some of that stuff. And I have detail under there, but that's cool. Provia does well in those situations. So this is a fallen tree that I photographed at the very end of the trip. And this was actually not on my last day because uh, I can tell this was taken with my 300 lens. I have a wider view of this scene with a different lens, uh, my 240. Um, I was concerned that perhaps I didn't have enough time to fully think through this composition and that I was not with the best light possible. I felt like the light was fading as I was setting this up. Now in terms of sharpness, it is indeed very sharp. Now when determining the exposure, uh, I started by metering off a gray card, but then I would check how bright that is, check how dark these areas were. And this was getting a little darker than I wanted. Um, and so that's why I really wanted to go back another day and to give it another shot. Um, but that, that one turned out fine. If this is all I had, I would, I'd be okay with it. And this is the wider view. Now the reason I wanted to come back, not only um, for catching a little bit better light, which you'll see, um, you can see how there's a bit more warmth to this one because the light was already fading on that. Um, but also I felt like this subject needed a wider view to show greater context with these trees back here, additional layers to create additional depth. And then as I've said in, in the past, I, I don't want this tree to be coming directly from this corner right here. I want it to be a little bit above that. And I think I was able to achieve that a little bit better with this composition. But I like the grass and all this had been laid down from when there was snow in here. There's still a little bit of snow in the background. Um, now in terms of focus, what I'll be curious to see is how well I did for focus here all the way up to there. And then if I'm able to get those trees back there. So that all looks good, that looks good, that looks good, and even the trees are good. At the very, very tops of the trees, it starts to soften a little bit just because a plane of focus is cutting through them. But overall, I'm, I'm happy with that. Kind of a, a poetic sort of image. Here we have a little bit of a brighter exposure. Um, and again, I was using my spot meter to check the brightness of that against the darkness of that. Try to make sure that I was able to get both of those in um, with a good exposure. And actually, that's good. That's good. So this is basically a perfect exposure. Um, things I was trying to be careful about while composing this, um, there's a slope back here. Anything beyond that is going to be really bright. So I could always burn that stuff down a little bit. But I was trying to avoid any more of showing that corner. And I wouldn't have minded if this tree could have been, if these trees could have been moved over somehow. But by the time you move around to get that angle, um, you don't have this at a desirable angle anymore. But I quite like that. And the other thing I was juggling on all of these was the wind. Um, wind was, it was a little bit of an issue that day. And so there might be a little motion in the grass, which is just fine. There's a little bit of motion in some of the bushes, which is fine. By and large, though, most of it is all very still. So I'll have quite a few sheets of that. And there's even one sheet at the very end when a buck walked through the scene. And it was not standing still. I still exposed a sheet of film, but there's going to be one that has a blurry deer in it. This exposure is a bit darker, uh, so not quite as good of an exposure. On, on some of these, if I remember right, um, it was naturally giving me a one second shutter speed. Um, or it was actually just slightly over one second is what it was giving me. So on some of them, I gave it just the one second, knowing it'd be a little bit darker, but less of a chance of wind motion. And for some of them, because I was right on that, that borderline where 
um, it gets to be difficult to time, 1.3, 1.6 seconds. So I put a uh, ND filter on there to lengthen the exposures. And then that way it's just easier for me to time it with a stopwatch in bald mode, which may have been what the previous one was. Um, this is a little bit darker than I like, but not bad. And here's the one with the buck. The blurry deer. It would have been really cool if this, if this buck was just standing still and staring right at me. Because how often do you get a chance to photograph a scene like this with a deer in it? Um, but this was, was not meant to be. But, you know, he's hanging out there. So I guess this makes, I'm a, makes me a wildlife photographer now. So that's, that's cool. Unlock that achievement. Uh, so my first reaction when looking at this is that it really should be viewed perhaps like this. Uh, I was trying to balance all of the, these elements with the rock. And I don't know. This could be okay. I suppose I won't really know until I see it on the computer. This might be fine. Um, but I liked all this ice here. I like the fact that there was some flowing water. So you reveal a little bit of the rocks underneath it. Um, I like the fact that this rock had an interesting texture on it. And then you see the area with the, the ice around it there, sort of changing the color of it. Um, it's a pretty cool scene. Let's see how we did. It's very sharp. These sort of subjects work very well for large format, just because the ice has a defined plane of focus. The rock isn't rising much above it. There's a bit of a slower shutter speed with the water blurring the rocks underneath there anyway, so it doesn't really matter if they're in focus. Um, it'll be interesting to scan this. There's just lots of different elements I was working with. And uh, the one thing I was trying to avoid, and I mostly did, there was a distracting uh, element right out of view on the bottom, so I was trying to avoid that as much as possible. Um, the rock isn't centered. It's also not offset in a nice area. It's just a little bit off, because I'm trying to balance this element with this, with this, and I think it works. I may need to crop a little more off the bottom. Maybe just a little, I don't know. But, technically, Works out well. Another variation of that. I feel like this exposure may be a hair darker. Yeah. I mean, they're very close. This one's a little bit brighter. So this is probably the one I'll scan. Um, but they're certainly very close. Cool. So this is a bit of a fun one. Uh, so I was wandering along the river and wasn't really planning on taking any photos, but I came across this scene and I really liked the fact that you could see the reflection of the canyon wall in the background. And then you have the blue sky and you have all this sort of transitional stuff where you're picking up some of the blues and some of the oranges. Um, and I was trying to have things flow through the composition like that and trying to figure out how much space I needed up top. And I think I did pretty well with that. Um, I wouldn't mind if the exposure was a hair brighter. But in reality, I have everything I really need. It is pretty fun to look at. Getting all the blues. Okay, now this is interesting. This is something I did not notice when I was there. There's an insect on that rock right there. Um, which is a little bit confusing because it looks a bit like a mayfly. With like the the wings are upright and like the little two little things that go out of its end. But this is February in Zion. 
So I'm not sure what to think about that, but that's interesting. Um, then you get the river flowing through there. I have to scan it. Definitely interesting. I might lose. I might want to scan, crop a little off the top, but maybe it's okay. But that's cool to have that line there. And I should have another variation of that one as well. Uh, okay, so this is the exact same scene. The difference between this one and the previous one is the shutter speed. One of these was at one second, the other one's at a half second. So let's see if we can tell which is which. Um, I would say this is one second, this is a half second. There's not a big difference. There's honestly not a huge difference. But I find, I find that this seems a little smoother, perhaps. Um, but yeah, pretty cool. It'd be interesting to scan those. And then we have another variation of that scene. Now, this is the first composition I shot of the scene. And in this one, I wanted to have the source of the rocks over here. So you have a little bit of the bank, but it's almost as though this is where everything is originating from and then spilling throughout the composition. I think I might like this one a little bit more because this emphasis right here is a little higher up within the composition. Um, and the fact that it kind of seems like things are from here and kind of breaking apart as they move across. So I'd be curious whether you prefer that one or that one. It's tough to say, but I think I like the distribution of rocks on this one a little bit better. And we'll see how we do in terms of sharpness. Yeah, it's tack sharp. And I believe this was a one second shutter speed. As far as metering, uh, I was metering the brightest areas, probably more so up there, and then also making sure I was metering some of these darker rocks to make sure I'm gonna have detail in there. I'm gonna have to play with the curves a little bit to, to work with it a little bit, but I think I prefer this one. It's hard to say until I scan it though. Here we have the pine needles in the snow. Now, I found the scene while just out wandering around, went back and grabbed my camera, and I thought this is interesting because there are some areas where the pine needles are still there, other areas where they had been blown away, so they're not there anymore. You just have like these like ghosts of where the pine needles were. And it was a little bit of a high cloud, hazy kind of day. And what was happening is as the sun was, you know, starting to drop in the sky, heading towards um, sunset, there was a pine tree off in the distance and it was casting some shadows over the scene. And so I figured I'll expose some of the film while we have the shadows there just to have some interesting light to it. And then I noticed that this guy right here was casting shadows across there, which was kind of interesting. So I have this sort of light, but I also expose a sheet as the sun had dropped behind the horizon and it's just all soft light. So it'll be interesting to see how they compare. The exposure on this one is very good. Um, the color is very natural. Um, I have texture in the snow. Uh, very fun one to look at. Um, so, I mean, I, I quite like that. Uh, we'll see what the other variations of that are. So here, the light is similar. This was probably taken after the previous one. It's a little bit more solemn in a way, a bit more blue tone. You have some light going across it. You still have the shadows from this guy right here. Um, the pink going on there. I feel like that's something from developing, but I can, I can work with that. 
Um, I do wish there was a little more light back over here, just to balance it out. But exposure is good, and the, um, the color is good. And then here we have, this is the soft light just after the sun dropped back behind the horizon. Uh, I used a warming filter on this one because I knew that otherwise it would go very cyan, which I wanted to avoid. This one places more emphasis on the depressions in the, in the snow. We don't have the shadow from this guy right here, but this one's a bit more consistent. And the exposure is very good on this one. I was a bit worried that my exposure was gonna be very dark because it's difficult to meter for something like this to hold detail. Um, but I was metering these areas at about positive two in my meter. And so it gives me plenty to work with. So it's a good exposure. Um, <laughs> the tricky thing for these scenes was, since this is a close-up photo, um, I have to um, correct for bellows overextension. And in the case of this, it was 0.7 stops. And the way you do that is you have this little circle cut out of paper and you place it in the scene. And on the ground glass, you measure it with a ruler and it tells you how much compensation to add. And this is tricky because, you know, you lay anything down there, it's gonna leave a mark in the snow. So to be very, very careful about that. Um, but yeah. That's cool, I like that. I have to scan both of those and see how they turn out. And then another variation with some sort of light hitting there, which I'm not quite sure what that's all about. Um, could have been, it doesn't really look like light. It looks more like flare, maybe it's flare. I don't know, it's a little bit weird. But the other one was fine. And this is kind of cool. So this is a scene I found out. I have another photo I took from the same wash, very different. And while I was wandering along, there was so much beautiful ice in this scene. This was a flowing creek the day before. And then I went down to it on this day to go check it out. And sure enough, there was a lot of ice to work with. I loved this rock and was thinking about just a close up but it just didn't quite work because this is fine in this composition, but it would have become it would become a very distracting thing in a close-up. Um, and then also this would have been in there as well. So I went for a little bit of a wider view, which I think works really well, um, concentrating on all this stuff and how everything is interconnected. And I quite like this. And I took this just before some direct sunlight uh, flooded into view. And it was the, the next scene that you'll see, I have one more of this one, but beyond that um, is another scene. And I had photographed that one, then I came back to this one, and I just barely was able to photograph this one. But let's check sharpness. It is indeed very sharp. It's beautiful, absolutely calm morning. So I really like that one. I'm glad that I went back for that one because I was, I was a bit rushed, very rushed when setting up the composition, but it worked out well. And tripod placement is tough too because there is some ice in the foreground and tripod legs and ice don't match very well. And then a second exposure, just a backup exposure of that same scene. Again, the light was just out of view but I do like how everything is interconnected and then you get some of the cool stuff there as well. So I, I quite like that. And the other thing too, I was a little concerned about with this was that since this triangular shaped rock is such a dominant rock, um, I was very careful about the angle that I chose so that the shape of it and where it was pointing didn't point like just towards the edge of the frame. You'll notice that this right here is what I have on this edge. If it was pointing like right up here, it'd take your eye right out of the scene. But because of this composition, it kind of keeps you in it. So I really look forward to scanning that. 
And this should be my last. Okay. This is... This is one I was really looking forward to. And I'm glad I didn't mess it up. I haven't looked at it with a loop yet, but hopefully it's sharp. Um, this is just upstream from the previous one. And I was debating which of these two to photograph because I figured I only have time to shoot one of them. And to me, this is unlike anything I've photographed before in terms of the ice. We have the mud ripples with the ice that's forming in the lower parts of the mud ripples. But then you get these cool lines that move all the way through that. And I love the distribution. Everything is very evenly distributed. This right here is what caught my attention. So I try to have very equal spacing there and try to kind of move that towards um, kind of offset space there and just try to make sure everything else works well the edges. So I, I'm really happy with the way the composition turned out. Um, I have two exposures of this. Uh, the light will be a little bit different between the two of them. So let's see how the other one is. Um, this one's a little bit more magenta. And I may have to scan both of them. I think I like this one. It has a bit more warmth to it. But I really like this. I like how it transitions from the, so the dry part of the frozen sand to the ice-covered part of the frozen sand to just the ice. So you have these transitions. Um, but I really like that. That's very cool, especially with these lines radiating from this point, which is a bit triangular there as well. But I really look forward to scanning this one. And it is sharp. It's so cool when you see individual grains of sand, little ice bubbles. So I'm very, very happy with that. So I think between this one, the previous one, maybe some of the rock shots in the river, um, I've got a lot of stuff to work with. And today it is snowing like crazy in Zion. And I knew that that storm was going to arrive, but for me, I love as great it would, as it would be to experience the snow in Zion. I love this stuff so much more and this stuff changes so much. And this is probably buried under a couple of feet of snow right now. So absolutely beautiful. Uh, but I want to thank everyone for watching and we'll see you around next time. If you enjoy this ad-free and clickbait-free content and want to help me live my dream, a voluntary contribution through PayPal or by joining my Patreon helps keep my gas tank full and my film freezer stocked. For more information on how to support me and my work, please visit the donation section of my website at benhorn.com slash donate. I also have prints, ebooks, and my annual print portfolio is available on my website. You can find a direct link down below in the show notes. Thanks in advance for your support.